we don't really know all the particulars about this, but just through experience, we know that we can oversaturate the water and it can cause problems with survival on the other end. You need to have uh, a good regulator and, and what we call hospital fine regulators to uh, regulate that flow. From my experience, when you set the flow rate on these hospital regulators, you're very rarely going to go above uh, two. It takes very a very low amount of oxygen to aerate these shrimp, but you've got to have it. Shrimp can be transported for 14 to 20 hours without any major problems. But if you're going to transport them that long, you've got to plan on feeding them. You need to feed them about every three to four hours. And the shrimp hatchery is going to provide either frozen or live brine shrimp. And uh, you'll feed the, the PLs, these brine shrimp, uh, during, the, during the trip. If you don't feed them, they're just going to eat each other and you're going to end up with fewer shrimp when you get to the farm. Okay, folks, this is a standard tote. This tote is normally used in the seafood business to keep product very, very cold. It's insulated. It's about two inches thick. Um, but you've got to modify these totes in a base, about three different ways. First off, starting with the lid, you've got to put a hole in there um, so you can check your oxygen. And also, uh, you're going to run your oxygen hose through this tube right here and connect it to an air stone, which would be on the bottom of the tank. Second modification you've got to make is you have to add a gasket to the bottom of the, of the container right here and also to the, the bottom of the, uh, of the lid. And that's going to keep the water from sloshing out. So if you go around curves in your truck, the water's going to slosh, and when the water sloshes, you're losing shrimp of the water. Third modification you've got to make is you need to put a fitting down here that has a valve on it that you can release the shrimp with. Okay? Now, these things get very, very heavy during transport. They're basically full of water. Uh, they weigh about almost a ton apiece. And you don't want them moving around the back of that truck. So you've got to get them secure in, in the back of the truck, no movement whatsoever. If they do move any on you, or they shift any of you, you're going to break this valve and you're going to end up with, with uh, shrimp strewn all over Interstate 65. Uh, also, the uh, tanks come with these binder straps and they're, they're very tight fitting. So once the lid is on there on all four corners, the lid's not going to go anywhere. But you got to make sure they're watertight. Folks, this is David Tiger Coddington with Green Prairie Aqua Farms, just north of Forkland, Alabama. And David has been raising shrimp now for five years. Going on five. Going on five years. And um, he's a former extension agent. And um, he's been doing been struggling with this shrimp farm for five years, but we've been both been learning in the process. Now I'm going to let David talk to you about his acclimation facility here. Okay, what we have here is our, our really our three tanks. They're, each tank measures 10 by 32 feet, 10 feet wide, 32 feet long. They're about four feet deep, and basically what we've done is construct them out of a four by four with a uh, three-quarter inch plywood, everything treated, all the wood treated, of course, and then we've lined the tanks with uh, EPDM rubber. Uh, we, can, we can get up to about two million post larvae per tank if we want to put that many in there. And uh, basically, you see all the tanks have a water inlet, and uh, at the other end of it, it's, there's a drain. and. Uh, you have to have that, of course, because you, you're always using plenty of water. Uh, you can see these other tanks have water running into them continuously. The airline is just constructed out of PVC, and we have it going down to a manifold. There's a manifold that runs along the bottom edge of that tank, and then I have five one-inch long PVC pieces running the length of the tank. Each 
at the bottom of those one inch PVC uh, pipes we have drilled I think it's like a 132nd or 164th hole all along there about every six inches we have a hole drilled in those pipes so what we do is just blow high volume air low low pressure high volume air using these uh, 2.5 horsepower blowers and we just blow air through the system uh, it's, a, it's a cheap way of doing an aeration system basically and we have two two and a half horsepower air blowers that we can use if uh, when we fill these tanks up the one of the disadvantages with these blowers is that they don't function very well when you get a little bit of well, when you get more than about uh, 35 inches of water on top of them so you need a little bit more power to get air out through the whole system so we'll use both those blowers once we fill our tanks up otherwise you can get a buy with about one of them with this set of tanks that we have here okay we have uh, our water supply really consists of two components we have in our pond back here we have a uh, I believe it's like about a one and one horsepower uh, jacuzzi pump that pumps water into our reservoir tank up here in the hill and we can either we can pump water directly from the pond into our tanks if we need to or we can pump water into our reservoir tank and then flow water by gravity from reservoir tank to these uh, acclimation tanks so uh, that gives us a lot of flexibility uh, we don't have to run the pump all the time if we want to get water basically by using that reservoir tank uh, we also have we have lighting here which may seem somewhat luxurious but it really isn't because you have to care for these shrimp 24 hours a day every four hours you need to be feeding them you need to be checking on them make sure the air is running uh, so the lights are almost a they're, they're an absolute absolutely needed feature for nighttime work we also have a backup generator which I just basically have an old uh, welding machine we use as a backup generator in case the power goes off we can power our at least one air blower with that with that generator now uh, you, you really need to have some backup uh, we've used them maybe two times over five years but when you need it you need it you gotta have some kind of a generator okay I'm gonna introduce you to Mr. Dickie Odom Dickey was one of our pioneers in the strip business. He started with Rafe Taylor back in 1999 with uh, trying to see whether or not shrimp would actually grow in our inland salt water. And since then, he's come a long ways. He's actually built more ponds and um, really, really expanded his acreage. And I'm going to let Dickey explain to you his particular acclimation procedures and the equipment that he uses. Dickey? Thank you, Greg. Oh, well, we're here on two new ponds that I've just built. Uh, what I, I do things a little different. Everybody's got a way of doing it. Uh, I recommend on your farm that you, you do what works for you, and this is what's worked for me in the past. What we're doing here, and, and I think it's been explained, but this is some very unusual weather we're having right now. I've never had 70-degree water in the middle of May, and it's tough on these PLs. Uh, there are a number of different ways to acclimate shrimp. I acclimate mine in the in tanks on the pond dams. These are 700 gallon tanks. We've got them covered trying to retain some heat. Uh, the temperature in these things earlier this morning were about, were about 68, which is nowhere near optimal. Uh, we'd, we'd like to have about 85. But regardless, we've got to deal with this weather. And these are 700 gallon tanks. We stock approximately 100, 125,000 PLs per tank. It's uh, ideally it's about 25 per liter is what you ought to stock. We've got uh, we're supplying these tanks with air, and, if you, and we're also introducing pond water at the same time to acclimate these things down to uh, our local salinity, which is about five parts per thousand. We uh. For this, for this shipment, I received my shrimp uh, from Florida in uh, airbags and, and styrofoam coolers. Probably the second best way to get them. I probably in totes uh, is the best way, but I did this because with airbags, we've got a known number of shrimp in the, in the bag. They're easy to uh, distribute. You don't have to worry about counting. You can get them, get them in your tanks a little quicker. 
this particular time, we had a little tough time with, with, the, with the acclimation and the, we did 